If you have or suspect you may have a health problem, or if you require answers to specific health care questions or concerns, you should consult your physician or health care provider and not depend solely on information presented in this program. Hi, I'm Dr. Steve Garner, and I want to welcome you to our inaugural show of the 11th season. I, I cannot believe that it's the 11th season. It's like dog years, I tell. Every two weeks is another season. But this is 11, believe it or not, for those counting at home. In human years, it's probably two. But anyway, I have a show today that gives me chills, because the guests that we've had here are carefully selected. They've been among our most popular guests in the past. And we're going to talk about issues that affect you, medical issues. And many of you may know that we have a website at netny.net. And on this website, you can tune in, ask questions, watch previous shows, um, read about up to date what's going on in the news, so, and look at our quiz. You know, we have a quiz every week. So I don't know how many of you, um, we keep flipping around the schedule, expected to see us live tonight, but we will be here in an abbreviated season up until May the 18th. So hope, we hope every Tuesday night you're going to tune in. So without further ado, I think we should get to our guests, see who they are. And then, of course, I got to say hello to Monsignor Bennett, who next week will be a special occasion. Monsignor won't be with us next week. He has other, other engagement. The first time in 11 seasons, Monsignor won't be here. But he will be back. You'll be back the next week, Monsignor? He will be back the next week. So for those at home worrying. And also another thing before we go, Maddie Mara, who was one of our favorite callers. You don't see a calling today. Was under the weather, was in New York Methodist, and is doing fine. She's out. She's her own self. And we should be hearing from us shortly. So again, um, great to have you back, Maddie. And we hope you're feeling well. Our guest for tonight, Dr. Tara Khan, who has, look at the color. This is, um, this is not a makeup. This is the Florida sunshine. Tell us a little, what were we doing down in Florida? I was working down there as an emergency physician. Wow, what is it, outdoor hospital? Uh, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> it's right by the beach, though, yeah. so that was fantastic. Very nice. In Fort Lauderdale, Miami? In Venice Beach. Oh, very nice. Very, very nice. nice. Yeah. Beautiful. Great to have you up here. Thank you. Now, you've been working on this website to try and help patients find the right doctor. Yes. Can you tell us in uh, about a minute what that is? Yeah, sure. Um, the name of it is docmatcher.com, mm -hmm. and it's a website that helps, helps you find a doctor that's right specifically for you. Then you can communicate with the doctor online, um, and you can also book appointments it's right like through the website. It's like matchdate.com? Many people joke that it's just yeah. like match.com, but instead you can find the perfect doctor. Amazing. Any marriages yet? No marriages no, no, yet. <laughs> could be, uh, but this Maybe. is great. So Maybe how, they know, the how do they reach you? Um, well, they can find me on the website at www.docmatcher.com, D-O-C-M-A-T-C-H-E-R, and I'm connected to Twitter and Facebook Excellent. and everything through that site. So for our two viewers out there with the computer, you know how to get in touch with it. <laughs> Don't expect a big, but we'll try. We'll try our best I can. Okay, and we're going to get your mother's, I understand, watching tonight. My mother's Island. watching. So, um, I think she needed some medical advice. I told her to call We're going to get a call. Uh, Excellent. <laughs> so fun to not to imprint. No lights flashing yet, but uh -oh. we'll, we'll get sure. there. And then, of course, Dr. <laughs> Daniel Stevens, who is no stranger to these, to these airways, um, up at Metropolitan Hospital, yes. Upper East Side. How are things up there? Uh, very good. Very good. Things are good. Uh, job's good. Good to be back here. Congratulations on the 11th season. 11th season. We very can... impressive. Now, laparoscopic surgery. People yeah. see that up there, and it's a fancy word. Can you just explain in their own what, what this is? Sure. Uh, it's a long word for small incisions, really. So instead of making a large incision, say, to take out a gallbladder or to take out a colon for a colon cancer, we're able to do it now with several smaller incisions. We insufflate the belly. With, what is that? We make it large. We, we fill the belly up with air. Mm -hmm. So it gives us room to work. And we work with little instruments. And we're able to do bigger surgeries through small incisions. So you get less pain, mm -hmm. uh, faster return to work, and generally much better tolerated. Very good. So this is, they get in and out of the hospital quicker. You're taking out liver. Go home yeah, quicker. Gallbladders, spleens. Whatever you can think of. This, well, if you need your gallbladder out, you need your liver taken out, this is the man to go to. <laughs> and he'll do it with a smile. Yeah. Excellent surgeon. This is who I would go to. And, of course, Dr. Anthony Saylor, who I think may hold a record for the most appearances on this show. Oh, boy. And maybe the world's greatest New York Yankee fan. Yes, that is true. Give us a highlight of today. Uh, big win today, home opener. The rings were given out. Um, Matsui, who's yeah. now with the Angels, came and uh, he was surrounded by his ex-teammates, got a standing ovation, very nice moment. And of course, Rivera with the save for uh, another win. 
And I, 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 not to bore you, but I was there opening day when Masui first came. There was snow on the ground at right. Yankee Stadium. Hit a home run. Hit a home run to win. Yeah. Yes. I, so it's great to have him back in town. He'll be around. Great to have the Yankees back. Yes. It's okay to have the Mets back, and uh, <laughs> we hope that something's going to turn around there. Now, what's going on in the news? And true, right? How much do you hear this thing over there? Everyone. These are real um, sound props. These are not. Now, <laughs> allergies, allergies. Hay fever could reach record proportions. And what are you going to do? How, who's not feeling it at this time? So I came up with a list, a top ten list of things you could do without taking pills, because pills have side effects and so on. So what could you do? Number one, keep the windows shut and the air conditioners on. Excellent way to filter out the pollen, keep the house clean. Two, in the car, get the electrostatic filter, something the car dealers don't want you to know. You can get a filter that they have. You just have to ask for it. Otherwise, you're not going to get it. So if you're having that pollen and you're in the car, Pollen isn't going to be there. Three, don't go out before 10 a.m., okay? Because pollen is worse before 10 a.m. Now, many of my radiologists follow this, but they're supposed to be there at 8, so we'll see what the story <laughs> is. Uh, no. Next, wear a mask if you're working in the yard. Very important because you'll filter out the pollen. Five, Vaseline. Vaseline to the nostrils helps to trap some of the pollen so it doesn't get into the nose. Shower frequently. I advise this frequently to her also. <laughs> but shower frequently, get that hair clean, so when you go, lie down in bed, you're not lying down with the pollen. Those heavy drapes and carpeting, get rid of them if you can, or put them in storage for the summer. Now, Dr. Khan was asking, what's the neti pot? The neti pot is this pot of water that you can actually take um, partly through the vapors and then partly through squirting water in one nostril, comes out the other nostril, cleans out the sinuses, cleans out the nostrils. Again, not the most aesthetically pleasing t uh, technique, but better than taking pills. Nine, the pets, keep them indoors. He's got the dogs, the cats, the cats, and all the pollen. They come in, you hug them, and you sneeze more. Wear large sunglasses and a big hat. Again, to protect the eyes and the hat. Now, if this doesn't work, we have some other things, medications. And probably, and I'll, I'll ask Dr. Seale's opinion later, but from what I can deduct, the nasal spray with steroid in it seems to be highly effective, like Flonase, one of those. Um, Dr. We'll, we'll get into that in a little while. I just wanted to move it on with this. So the nasal spray, Claritin, it's, it's an antihistamine that doesn't make you drowsy. And Benadryl, which was the prototype of the old antihistamines, actually caused a lot of harm to some people, particularly our elderly people who got confused, tired, and fell down, could break a hip. So it's a good idea to try and stay away from the Benadryl or the sedating ones. Chromalin, it's a pill that helps the, the body to avoid some of the chemicals, the poisons that are released after the, the allergen is found. And then avoid nasal decongestants because they can become addictive. Plus, they can have a, what's known as a rebound phenomenon where you get more swelling. If you use it for more than three days, you're going to run into trouble. So if you have good willpower, you can use it for three days, fine. If not, try the nasal spray or the chromalin spray. Now, why does hay fever occur? And it's a mess up in the immune system where the body fake, gets faked out. The pollen comes in and it says, oh boy, there's a big weapon. There's a big, excuse me, enemy. I've got to send out the big guns to kill it. And that's what makes you feel bad. It puts out this histamine. It's a chemical that causes all the sneezing and the swelling of the membranes in the nose and the watery eyes. So it's a defect, in a way, in the immune system. And usually you can outgrow it, although you still may get it later on in life, but usually the immune system gets smarter. And if you don't treat it, you can get sinus infections, you get all kinds of problems, sore throats, bloody noses, dizziness, and so on. So that's, that's a pretty much a good start to allergies the alle and ways that you can avoid some of the horrors of allergy. Now, quiz. Now, this is a tough one. The quiz master was in a very bad mood this week, had tough allergies, and said, you know, she really gave one of the hardest ones that I saw. So if you don't get it, I can understand it. It's a palindrome. Palindrome is a, now that's not the quiz. This is, the, a palindrome is a word spelled the same backwards and forwards, okay? Think of the name of a language that's spelled the same way backwards and forwards. It's not a common language, so it's kind of tricky. Think exotic, think Eastern. Right? Eastern? Okay. Oh boy, I'm, I'm out of breath here from this. I tell you, I tell you, I got chills today. But when we come back, we're going to go right to our phones. And now our topics are general medicine, emergency medicine, laparoscopic surgery, and lung disease. We'll be right back. The number, 718-499-6101. It's a good time to call. See you in a little while. I'm Dr. Steve Garner, the host of Ask the Doctor. In addition to watching Ask the Doctor every Tuesday night at 8, you can also visit www.netny.net slash askthedoctor. There you can find the topics and guests of each episode. You can read my column from the week for the tablet, and for more advice, you can watch episodes you've missed. 
More importantly, you can post your questions and I'll answer them on the video blog. So visit www.netny.net slash doctor and get your daily dose of healthy advice. Welcome back to Ask the Doctor, where our topics are general medicine, emergency medicine, laparoscopic surgery, and lung disease. And for those new to the show, there are two ways to get your questions in. One, by calling the live phone line, which is the 718-499-6101, or by visiting our website at netny.net slash doctor. You can submit questions and opinions via the forum. Now, we got a phone lines that are flickering, but we're not sure who's calling yet. So before we get to that phone line, I have a, a web question. Now, this is someone that, that sent in. It's a 60-year-old woman. Now, eight years ago, she had a gallbladder taken out due to stones. I felt fine, but recently, the last three years, I lost a lot of weight and got stomach pain and always diarrhea as well. Sometimes I don't have stool for three or four days, but other times I have diarrhea every day for a few days with stomach pain. So she has diarrhea, some constipation. I lost 25 pounds in this period, and now I'm very skinny and worried. Kindly guide me to solve my sickness. I apologize for my poor English and any inconvenience. And Elena, I won't give her last name for, you know, so, but, so what's going on? She had a gallbladder out, and then she's doing fine. Three years pass, and she starts losing weight, stomach pain, diarrhea. Any thoughts on this? Who, who wants to? Dr. Stevens? Well, and this, this woman's 60 years old, correct? Yes. So, you know, these are some common signs. Uh, uh, weight loss, vague abdominal pain, change in bowel habits. These are some things that you definitely need to worry about if anybody's having these signs. Um, it's something you definitely need to see your doctor about. Um, and what she probably needs is a colonoscopy. That's what I would recommend, number one, aside from a regular uh, history and physical and basic labs. You definitely need a colonoscopy just to make sure there's not something else going on. And typically this is how a colon cancer, pancreatic cancer can present with a weight loss. Any unexpected weight loss when you're not trying to lose weight is not necessarily a good thing. So you definitely need to see your doctor and, and get checked up. Very good. And before we go to the phones, I have Dr. Saylor. And we were talking before about what's new and exciting in your life. We talked about the Yankees. But if we were miss anything else going on you want to talk about? Nothing. No, no. Okay, we'll see. We'll see as the summer goes yes. on. <laughs> yes. Okay, now we're going to go to Vincent. Vincent on line one. Hi, Vincent. Yeah, how you doing, Dr. Gunn? How are you? How you doing? Good. You, you sound uh, a little under the weather. The weather's nice. I mean... You're doing okay? Doing all right. What can we do for you tonight? Okay, what about my favorite restaurant? I thought you asked me that. Oh, well, you, you see, uh, you should. You got to come down and do this show. What, what's uh, you're going to tell me? It's um, the one on um, with the pizza guy. No, no, it's Bocelli's on Highland Boulevard. Bocelli's in Staten Island. Yep. Very nice. Didn't you once plug this before? Did you once tell us about Bocelli's? No, no, no. It's a I great place. I brought this several years ago, but that wasn't about Bocelli's. Is that upstairs? Yes. Very nice. Anybody been there on the panel? No. Excellent place in Staten Island. We like that a lot. Good, good. So tell me, what can we do? All right. I have a, a, a something going on for three years. I'm uh, this, this month I'll be uh, 66 years old. I'm relatively healthy, but I have tinnitus. It's, I have it for three years. It's ringing in the ears, and uh, you know, I spoke to a few people about it. There, there's really not much I could do. They tell me it could be, uh, you know, your ears, uh, something with the ear, and, and it's a horrible thing. They give you hearing aids. They, uh, they tell you, you know, they tell you really there's not much you can do. And I was wondering. I look on the internet, and they tell you like you can get this from a tumor or a bang on the head. And, and, and uh, w w tell me something about it. Is there a cure? Is there a cure? And uh, they're bombarding the TV with this quietest, this commercial. Dr. Saylor, what about uh, tinnitus? Well, tinnitus is a fairly common uh, condition. Um, one of the first things I would think of about tinnitus is medication, in particular aspirin. So if you're taking a lot of aspirin, that's something. I know, Dr. Khan, you see a fair amount of that. Maybe you want to be a little more elaborate. Sure. Yeah. Well, tinnitus is very common, as you say, uh, and medications definitely can be a cause, um, as well as some rare conditions can be a cause of tinnitus. Now. There isn't much that you can, that I know of that you can do for tinnitus, but you can see an ear, nose, and throat doctor, and they usually will be able to give you some advice on if there is some treatments. But I know that there is testing for the cause of tinnitus, which is very important to find out where it's coming from, because it's a very irritating <coughs> yeah. condition. See, I think also you want to make sure it's not coming from something serious, although less likely you want to make sure you're not dealing with a tumor. Not, exactly. not as likely. Do you have all those tests, the CAT scan or MRI? 
Vincent, oh, they didn't give me. Did you have a CAT scan or anything? No, they never gave me a CAT no. scan. It could come from a bump on the head. You know, it can come from trauma, but I doubt a bump on the, bump on the head would be kind of unusual. Mm -hmm. um, how much of a bump? Well, like say you hit yourself against a gate real hard like 20 years ago. Would it, would it, would Probably it? not. Unlikely. No, unlikely. Yeah. Unlikely. But um, it may be a time to get it checked out once just to comfort yourself to know that it's nothing like a tumor or yeah. something, maybe CAT scan or an MRI. Uh, well, I'm going to uh, a doctor uh, uh, this week, and I'll see if she could tell me what to do. Yeah, why don't you ask her about that, though, to getting the test done? And then, okay. Can you give us a call back? Let us know how it works sure, out. Sure, sure. Thanks a lot. Thanks Vincent. for coming back on the air. Thanks a lot. Have bye a good bye. night. We're now going to talk to Myra. Hi, Myra. Hi, how are you? Good. Where are you calling us from? I'm calling from the Brownsville section of Brooklyn. Oh, it sounds like you're on a microphone. It's very <laughs> good. How are, how are things on Brownsville tonight? Well, I hope it's quiet. It's quiet. We could use the quiet. What, what do you like to eat when you go out in Brownsville? Tell us a place. Well, I have to go to bed -Stuy. There's a delicious rib place oh. um, on Horsey and Troop. Delicious ribs. In Brownsville itself, um, you would have to go out of the um, bur out of the neighborhood. I hear that in bed -Stuy, there's a lot of artists moving into the neighborhood? Oh, yes. That neighborhood is up and coming. That neighborhood and... Cobble Hill, up and coming. Did you see that the best neighborhood in the city, I think, was, mm -hmm. was Hawk Slope? Hawk Slope, yeah. yeah. But you know what? I do like it out there because I work out there. It is nice. It's in very Hawk nice Slope. out there. Yes, in yeah, Hawk Slope. Where do you work? I work on 4th Avenue and 9th Street. Oh, right near the train. Right there, right at the F train, the F and the R. Very nice, very nice. So what can we do for you? Well, I have two questions. The first one is on general medicine. I went to the doctor yesterday. My blood pressure was 140 over 90. I take Diavan 160 milligrams. So my doctor increased the dosage to 320. I said, 320? That's too much. He said, no, I want to bring down the 90. But I hadn't taken my medicine yesterday because I was out. So when I got home, I took the 320 milligram milligrams, but when I got up this morning, I was weak and a little nauseous, so I went back to the doctor, but he said because my pressure was, I hadn't taken the medicine, that my pressure would be high, so I went to my neighbor who has um, the meter, and well, it was high, it was 158 over 102, so I came upstairs and took my medicine. I don't know if her machine was accurate. All right, so let, let me just, let me just, Myra, let me just get on to this now with Dr. Khan. Mm -hmm. Okay. What do you, are you impressed with these numbers? The numbers don't seem that impressive, um, but the weakness can definitely be a sign of either high blood pressure or low blood pressure. Now, you, you seem to have taken your blood pressure a while after um, you were f not feeling so well, so I don't think that that measure is really a good indicator that it was high. In fact, because you took your medication before you went to bed, right, yeah. um, it could have been very low in the morning when you awoke. It's a new dose of a medication, and that could definitely make you feel weak and tired. I would suggest, do you take your medication once Per day, did you say? How many Once times per day. day? Once per day. Um, I would suggest talking to your doctor about it, but possibly taking it at a different time, maybe earlier in the day, or in the afternoon sometime, um, so that it doesn't have such an effect upon waking up or, or going to sleep. So, so you didn't think the 320 was too much? No, if that's the appropriate dose, then... If you need to double the dose, then I'm sure the doctor... So, Myra, why don't you take that for a while? Let's see how it goes, and then we'll hear back from you in a couple of weeks. Okay. Okay, Myra, thanks so much for calling. All right, then. Great to have you on. We're now going to go to Joe. Hey, Joe. Hi, doctor. Hi, can you talk up a little bit, Joe? I can't quite hear. Okay, I'm trying to try get a little louder. Where are you calling us from? I'm calling from Bensonhurst. Oh, beautiful area. Yeah. What's that, um, mm -hmm. that nice restaurant out there with a singing opera out there? Oh, I don't know. I usually go to New Corners. The New Corners? Yeah. Where is that? On uh, 7th Avenue, 8th Avenue. Dr. Saylor knows that place. 7th Avenue. It's a good oh, place. Is it diner? It's, it's a luncheonette? Or it's a no, it's no, a, a, a family-style restaurant. Really? Right across the yeah. street from my office. Oh, oh there's right across. So is there any connect? Maybe we could have a little deal. Straight you go to line. Dr. Saylor's <laughs> office, you go and get a free... <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so um, what can we do for you, Joe? I, I'd like to find out if there's such a thing as getting immune medications that you're taking. Immune to medications. Yeah, Doctor, in other words, uh, if you're taking them a while, 
Right, can you get used to it? Not used to it, whether it, uh, it's effective or becomes not effective, you know? Okay, a any particular medication? Well, I take uh, a metformin, uh, glucotrol for uh, diabetes. I take, uh, uh, these are generic names, uh, uh, okay, so we're going to talk about diabetes, and I want to throw in also pain pills, because a lot of people take that after a while. Yeah, so I'm going to throw that to Dr. Stevens and the painkiller aspect. Can you get sure. used to them so it doesn't work as well? Well, in some sense, your body does definitely get used to these medications, Joe. Um, as far as the diabetes medicines, uh, it's possible that your diabetes may be getting worse, and you may be requiring more of the medicine. You're not necessarily getting uh, uh, immune to the medicine per se. So you may need more of the medicine to control your diabetes. Um, diabetes with pain medicines, well this can happen. You require more. Your body does get used to those. So uh, you know, I would see your doctor and have him check your, your hemoglobin A1C and things like that to see how your diabetes is doing. Uh, and it's not uncommon that you need higher doses as time goes on. Oh, doctor, Joe? I have a good, uh, my diabetes is well under control. So that's good. Yeah, now what about, uh, uh, generic uh, Metropolo and um, and now April. Dr. Saylor, generic. Um. generic yeah, I, <clears throat> you know, I think with with the insurance companies, Joe, and these uh, medications being so expensive, if you can get the generic medications, f some of them, a, a great number of them actually, they'll work just as well as the more expensive uh, brand name. So if you have to get generic, give it a shot. And then if you have problems with it, you have reactions, you have side effects, then you should go back to your doctor and maybe consider the brand. But I think for now, it's certainly worth your while to give the generics a shot. Yeah, Joe, well, I, I don't does have that help you? Problems. I don't have any problems with the uh, medication. I just wanted to know if, uh, you know, it's, a, it's good to continue. Yeah, so the, I think you got an answer there. Sure. So, Joe, let me ask you a question. In the old days, there had so many movie theaters in New York, right? It sounds like you've been around. We've been around for a long time. Yeah. What was your favorite movie theater that's no longer there? Oh, uh, you got the Alpine. Yeah. <laughs> you, if you want to go downtown, I was brought up downtown, and uh, and uh, you had the uh, Met, Metro, uh, the Met. The Metropolitan. Yeah, the Albi. The Albi. The Paramount. Ah, oh, the. These are, the, these are the good old days. Yeah, right. You ever go into the Lowy's Kings on Flatbush uh, Avenue? No, no, I don't watch, uh, I, don't, I don't go to the movie too often. But what I do, I, I make sure I try to get you on uh, Tuesday nights on oh, TV. That's the good answer, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Take care. Be well. Bye, right, Joe. Thank you. Okay. Joe's a good guy here. Okay. <laughs> Raymond. Hi, Raymond. Hello? Raymond, hi. How are you? How are you doing? Where are you calling us from? Uh, I'm calling you from Brooklyn, New York. Yes. Uh, you know what it is, Joe? Raymond, you got to turn that TV down. I'll okay. take a minute and I'll wait for you to come back. Okay. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. Very good. Uh, is this Dr. Garner? This is he. Okay, Dr. Garner, I just want to ask you one question before I go on. Okay. Do you know somebody named Raymond that lived in, in the war, that took care of your mom in the war bass houses? Could be my grandmother. No, it was Harriet. Harriet. We, we got to go back on the air because everyone doesn't want to hear about this, all right? Oh, okay. So give me a second. Okay, Okay, we're back, Raymond. Uh, okay, you there? Yeah. yeah, we're back. We're back. Okay, anyway, okay. my question is, uh, the, uh, a diaphragm that uh, catches something from a pneumonia and the person can't breathe on its own and they have to live on a respirator. Do you know anything about that at all? I think Dr. Sale is shaking his head, yes. Yes, uh, hi Raymond. Uh, uh, there are a lot of conditions you know that can cause you to have trouble with your lungs. Pneumonia is certainly one of them. Now, most pneumonias, Raymond, are reversible. So if you get the right antibiotic or if it's caught in time, you can get better and eventually come off the ventilator. If your lungs have become very weak or there's some muscular disease or some other issues which make you weak, then you may have to live the rest of your life on a ventilator. We have a lot of patients like that who have what we call <coughs> chronic ventilator dependency. But many of them could live lives, you know, they read, they watch TV, sometimes they can talk, 
So that's something that we see a fair amount of time. Yes, Raymond. Raymond? So there's no, there's no cure for that to get them off the respirator, huh? No, that's not true, Raymond. There, there may be a cure. Um, a lot of times what we do is we try to wean them off the ventilator. Sometimes it may take a very long time. So what we try to do is find out why they require the ventilator. Are their muscles weak? Do they have an acute lung problem? Is their heart weak? There are an awful lot of causes for needing the ventilator. And once we find out what the cause is, we may be able that, to then try to wean them off. And sometimes, Raymond, the weaning off may take months. So be patient. That is not an uncommon scenario. Raymond, thanks a lot for the call. Okay, you, you take care. Call us back. Thank you. Okay. And we're going to take a short break now. And I just had to tell, I ate a really great restaurant the other day, Anthony's. Anybody here of Anthony's restaurant, your namesake, on 7th Avenue and 9th, no, about 14th, 14th Street? Street. What a great place for pizza. And they actually have named the pizza a Dr. Gone Pizza. If anybody wants wow. to go and they ask okay. for it, and you get a free glass of wine with that. Oh. So it's very, um, very good to, uh, to know about this thing. You see, never say this show didn't give you anything. <laughs> All right, so what we'll do is we'll take a short break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about general medicine, surgery, and pulmonary medicine. We'll be right back. <laughs> I'm Dr. Steve Garner, the host of Ask the Doctor. In addition to watching Ask the Doctor every Tuesday night at 8, you can also visit www.netny.net slash askthedoctor. There you can find the topics and guests of each episode. You can read my column from the week for the tablet, and for more advice, you can watch episodes you've missed. More importantly, you can post your questions and I'll answer them on the video blog. So visit www.netny.net slash doctor and get your daily dose of healthy advice. Well, welcome back to Ask the Doctor, where our topics are general medicine, laparoscopic surgery, and lung disease. And with me, I have Dr. Tara Khan, a general medicine physician, Dr. Daniel Stevens, a laparoscopic surgeon, and Dr. Anthony Saylor, a pulmonary attending. We're going to get to the phone because there's a rumor that somebody may have the answer to this quiz. Let's see. Hello. Hello, Dr. Garner? Is this Geraldine? Yes, it is. Congratulations on your new season. Oh, thank you. On season 11, yes. Yeah, and it was easier to get through this time. The you know what it is? Yeah, because um, they're trying to switch the dates so we don't want our audience to get too used to tuning in on one particular day. <laughs> you see? Oh, I see. So we're able to get through. Right, right. Okay, so, I think I have the answer. Yes. I, wait, 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 wait. The drum, wait. Are you ready for the drum roll? Okay. Okay. No budget has been, no item has been spared <laughs> okay. on the show. Yes. What okay, is it? I'm going to spell it to you because I'm, I'm not sure how to say it. Okay. M-A-L-A-Y-A-L-A-M. The problem with that language is nobody can pronounce the name of it. <laughs> no. What is that? Meloyalum. Meloyalum. Okay, wow. is that the answer? Wow, yeah. this is amazing, Geraldine. I have to... Do you know which country you can find it in? It said India, but I looked it up on the internet. Okay, you're loud. <laughs> nobody said nobody said you couldn't do that. Okay, so, and listen, Dr. Garner, you don't have to send me another certificate because I have two already. <laughs> I'm feeling hurt. Wait. No, don't feel hurt. I, okay. I like the mugs, though, that I got from the Christmas trivia. That was nice. The mug you got? Yeah, those were nice. This one here? Yes, the yes. net mug. This is the, if anybody needs it, how much are these? Ten something. Ten something, wow. Did they charge you for the present? <laughs> no, but I looked it up on the internet. Okay. So, I Geraldine, this is amazing. We have to give it to you. Now, what would you, where are you planning to put this new one? Well, I haven't put the other ones up yet, but I, I'll probably put it right <laughs> over my computer. <laughs> okay, Geraldine, you're banned from the show. Okay, <laughs> okay. But anyway, great. Do you have any medical issues? No, I have nothing right now. But that's great, and, okay. and it should be on its way. The quiz master will be sending it to you, and great, great answer. Okay, thank okay. you. Be well. Take care. Okay. Bye-bye. Something. Okay. We have Larry from Line 3. I'm not sure if this is the Larry that we know from Rockland County. Yes, Dr. Garner. How are you? This is Larry from Rockland County, one of our furthest away listeners who c tunes in every Tuesday night on the Internet. Have well, you missed us the last few Tuesdays? Um, I, I did. Uh, I know that you uh, there was an eight-week uh, hiatus, I think, um, in between programs. Yes. Yes, and, uh, and I, then look they decided, you, yeah. I look forward to you coming back. Um, I have a, uh, a question um, for Dr. Stephens um, uh, uh, about, I have a friend who 
is um, in Florida, and uh, she went to her doctor. She's uh, she's grossly overweight, and he said that she should have a uh, a bypass, a stomach bypass. And he told her that uh, there are a couple of different kinds. One, they put a, some kind of a strap around it, and they put water or liquid of some kind. And the other one, they they move uh, some of the body parts to another area. Um, I'd like to know which one is better and um, or safer uh, to 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 do, so that I can relay this information to. Her. Thanks, Larry. So we're gonna what we'll do is find out what's the best way to somebody who's morbidly obese, weighs more than 100 pounds, what he should or she should. What, what's the best way to to, to treat this? Dr. Stevens. Great co question, Larry. Thanks. So, you know, it, it's sort of a complicated answer, but the, and the reason is is because there's no single best operation for for everybody. So, the three most common operations in this country for someone who is morbidly obese, which is someone who has a body mass index over 40 or body mass index over 35 with a weight-related disease like diabetes, hypertension, uh, asthma, or arthritis. Uh, so you can go to uh, Google, Google BMI, and find out your BMI. The options, if you failed uh, diet and exercise treatment for weight loss and you haven't been successful, are a gastric bypass, a lap band, and now the sleeve gastrectomy, which has been around for about five to seven years, is really gaining in popularity. And each of these operations has its pros and cons. Uh, what I think you were describing is, is the lap band, which is uh, basically a belt that sits... Uh, on the stomach and allows you to eat fewer calories throughout the course of a day. The gastric bypass does sort of the same thing, but you're rerouting your intestines so you don't absorb some of the food that you eat. And now with the sleeve gastrectomy, it's a different operation. You're basically shaping the stomach into a tube. So it allows you to eat less throughout the day, but you're not, you don't have any of the malabsorptive uh, complications that you get with the gastric bypass and other things and other complications of the bypass. So there's a spectrum. Each of them has its own weight loss uh, spectrum. So it's a, it's a difficult question to, uh, to answer simply, but there are very good options out there. So I suggest um, your friends see a bariatric surgeon and go over the, uh, in detail the three operations. Well, that, Is that helpful? That's, that's, that's helpful, and uh, you've, you've imparted uh, a good deal of information, but I've been scratching notes here. And um, I'm going to pass the, the word along and uh, see if we can get a response out of her. Larry, what was your old favorite movie theater hangout? My old favorite movie theater hangout was the Oceana. Oh, and back in the Sheepshead Bay, Brighton that Beach. That was in Brighton, Brighton Beach. Beach. Very nice. Yeah, and um, I heard somebody mention the Warbassy Apartments, which is also yeah. in that area as well. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, thanks a lot. Thank you very Thank much. You. I went to the Midwood movie theater. Anybody remember that? I went my first date there, but I'm, that's enough. Let's go to line uh, <laughs> to Boy, Bowie. Bowie? Yeah, uh, yeah, this is Boy. Is this Dr. Donna? How, yeah, how do you say that name? Boy. Bowie, it's It's like Boy with an E. Boy with an E, Boy, boy E. Boy. What's the derivation? Uh, the deri there's no derivation. It's a name that was just made up, really. <laughs> it's interesting. If you were I, girly, I, I, it would have been girly. It would have been really exactly, yeah. yeah. You must hear that all the time, right? Yes, yes. I'm sorry. Okay. What can we and, do for you? Well, you know, I have been having this uh, problem at the back of my throat where there's like a buildup of phlegm every time I have to be, you know, coughing it out, you know, trying to, to spit it out. I did go to an air, nose, and throat doctor, and he prescribed Nasonex. And I was told to use it for two weeks, and that should help. It could be a nasal drip in the back there. And I used it for two weeks. The first time I went to him, that cleared it up. But then after about three, four months, it came back again. And I have been using the Nation X again which, because I went back to him, uh, the doctor. And uh, it, it hasn't cleared up. It, it remains there. It's lingering. Uh, what can I do for it? Is there any uh, cure? Dr. Klein. I do smoke. I do smoke. So I don't know if it could be uh, a byproduct of, uh, of smoking. Dr. Khan, what about I, but I'm, I'm not a regular smoker. Like, I don't smoke a pack a day. Mm -hmm. I smoke maybe like about three, four cigarettes a day. Let's see. Uh, Let's see what so Dr. Khan has to say. 
What do you got to tell Boy? Boy, I would say that smoking is a very, that was the first question I was going to ask. Smoking is a very big part of that, likely. Um, however, allergy season is upon us, as Dr. Garner mentioned in the beginning of the show. Um, and so I imagine that if you have allergies, they might be playing a part. And if Nasonex has helped you in the past, uh, then maybe you do have some sort of allergy going on as well. Um, of course, I always advocate quit smoking. Uh, there's lots of programs to help you quit smoking, um, and it'll save your life. But also, if you need some treatment for allergies, there's plenty of over-the-counter medications, as well as prescribed medications, as well as all the tips that Dr. Garner gave us at the beginning of the show in order to decrease allergies. So, boy, it sounds like it's not dangerous, but something that's treatable. If we find, the number one, the cause would be helpful, mm -hmm. and number two, we may not find the cause, but empirically are treated just to improve the symptoms. Dr. Sally, any, any other thoughts? Boy, I think you should stop smoking. That right. may, even though it's only three to four cigarettes a day, that could irritate the back of your throat. And it sounds like the Nasonex is working. I guarantee you, if you stop smoking, it'll serve you very well, boy. Boy? All right, well, thank you very much. Which, which neighborhood are you calling us from, boy? Uh, what, what, uh, I'm calling from Old Mill Basin in oh. Brooklyn. Did you ever go out to the movies out there, any of the theaters? Oh, yes, I have. I have gone to, uh, to the uh, King's Plaza movie house. I think that closed down. Well, no, that still uh, is activated. Uh, but I do go to the uh, Sheep's Head Bay multiplex uh, movie houses on, uh, on the Canap Street over there. Very nice. So, but there, there's not none any around. There's no more movie houses around uh, Mill Basin anymore. Anyway, it's great talking to you. All right, same here. Thanks for Call all the advice. Nadia. Nadia? Uh, Nadia, I think I, you have your TV on. Yes. Just turn it off a second and come right back. Oh, sorry, a lot of the theaters are gone. Remember the matrons in the movie theaters? They were women that would come around and shine the light on your face as you were going down and keep. I remember those on a Saturday afternoon seeing a double feature. Come out when it's dark. You went in and it was light. Remember those? Sure. So Nadia? Yes. Hi. How are you, where are you calling us from? Riverside, Manhattan. Oh, in Manhattan. Very nice. There's a nice park up there, right? Okay. My question... I hardly can't hear you. Wait, was there a nice park up there along yes. the water? Yeah, so I'll get to your question because you're having a hard time hearing us. What's the question? Okay, my question is, um, I went to my gastroenterologist doctor, uh -huh. and um, I get a lot of gastritis, so he did an endoscopy, and he found that I have a... Um, Sarkarsky ring, I think, or Sarsky, Sharsky ring. Sharsky ring. He says it's at the bottom of my esophagus. Yes. And um, he says it's gotten very narrow, so he says that he's treating me with a medicine, but he says that probably he will have to um, insert a balloon and, like, stretch my esophagus. I'll get the answer through the TV, okay? Okay, so you're going to listen. We're going to talk about your, your esophagus. It's narrow. It has a ring and what we can do to fix it, correct? Yes. Okay, Nadia, so why don't you listen and we'll get to it. Who wants to start off with that, Dr. Stevens? Sure, hi Nadia. So, it sounds like what you're describing is that Schatzky's rings, which, which is basically a narrowing, just like you described, of the distal esophagus. And it causes trouble with eating, you probably had trouble eating and drinking uh, foods and liquids. So, the medicines can help. I'm not sure what kind of medicines your doctor put you on, but that may help relax the lower esophageal sphincter. That may help for a little bit, but probably what he suggested is a dilation, a balloon dilation or a pneumatic uh, dilation with air and pressure, and that's probably what you need. And most of these, most of these uh, rings are benign. They're not cancer. It's just sort of like scar tissue that you're born with that may get worse over the years. So the dilations are usually very successful, probably close to 90% successful. Uh, and they may need to be repeated after six months or a year. Um, they do have some complications, but they're generally very effective and, and usually very safe. So I suggest, uh, if that's what he is uh, suggesting, you go ahead with it. Nadia, thank you for the question. Now, next week, for the viewers out there, we're going to have a very special show. We're sending Teresia and the crew out on the streets, and they're going to be going in the different boroughs, asking questions, asking to have people ask questions to the doctor, and we're going to videotape it and then they can see themselves on TV, and we'll give an answer like such. And in addition, we'll be answering questions from the website. 
So next week won't be a live call-in show, but it'd be very interesting. We did this once in the past, and we really have some interesting questions. And one time we hope to have a live show. That's what we're, we're gearing for, to have audience members come in and ask questions. Oh. Excuse me. So we're hoping that's going to come to pass. But now we got Lewis on line three. Hi, Lewis. Uh, yes, Doc. How are you doing? Okay, uh, Where are you calling us from? Lewis. Having trouble with the, with the speaker. I can't quite hear. Lewis? Yes, Doc. You may have your TV on. Why don't you turn it down and then talk right into the phone, very loud. Lewis? Lewis, last chance? Okay, give us a call back, okay? We're now going to go to Clifford. Hi, Clifford. Hello. Hi, Clifford. Can you speak up a little? We're having a little weak mic tonight. Hey, can you hear me now? Let me see. Testing one, two, three, four. Yeah, um, I can hear you very Very good. Very good. What, where are you calling us from? Um, I'm actually calling from Brooklyn, New York. Which, which part? Um, Canarsie. Canarsie. Beautiful. Beautiful out there. Do you ever go on the pier? Yeah, I have. Isn't it nice out there? Yeah, it really is. What happened with, the, with that restaurant used to be, a Bracci Mentos? Is that gone? Um, I'm not sure. Yeah. So where do you like to go? You have a free, few, a free few minutes? You go to the city? You like to go in Brooklyn to eat? Where do you go? Mm, most of the time, it's, it's downtown Brooklyn. Nice. You ever gone to Queen? Um, yeah, I've, Queens. I've been there before. Oh, Queens, but there's a restaurant Queen, Queen in, restaurant. on Court Street, which is an amazing restaurant. I think one of the most underrated restaurants in the city. Great wine list if anybody wants to go out there. Oh, okay. Great place. Sounds interesting. But you said underrated? Underrated, because I don't think people appreciate it as much as they should. Oh, okay. It's kind of understated. The outside it looks like a storefront, but when you go in, it's really nice. Wow, it's unbelievable. <laughs> so what can we do for you? Well, I just had a few questions. Um, I just had one question, and a lot of people have been talking about uh, skin bleaching products and how controversial it's been lately, and there's a chemical that's found in it that's called hydroquinone, uh -huh. and I wanted to know if that chemical is safe or not. Again, we're talking about Michael Jackson um, did this a lot, bleaching the face with different creams. Yeah. Just on the surface, just intuitively, you probably come down, this is not the best thing to do to your skin. Okay. But let's see if, uh, what our panel thinks about skin bleaching. Anybody? I mean, I mean, this medication definitely gets into the body, gets into the bloodstream, and it can adversely affect the liver. So oh, okay. it's not the best thing. You don't want to do that. Plus, it can scar, it can bleach unnaturally and in, in, in an asymmetric way, so you have part of your face light, another part dark. Wow. Um, you're only asking for trouble. You don't want to do this. And uh, there's really, I mean, no reputable dermatologist that I know of that has the sign out for uh, face bleaching. Okay, and so how about I would definitely hydro, hy hydroquinone itself. How is it? It gets into the liver and metabolizes in the liver. Wow. So you want to stay away from that, all right? Okay. But, um, just stay out of the sun. That would, that, that's a good thing because whether you're light or dark skin, that sun makes you darker. And, and it actually, you, at one time, was thought African Americans would be free of melanoma, and this is just not true. I mean, any, I think it's a good time to talk about melanoma with the summer coming up. Dr. Saylor. Yes, melanoma is a very common disease, unfortunately, and this is why, uh, especially for you moms and dads out there, sunscreen your children very, very early on, even from when they're in preschool, because the effect of the sun can really be devastating. And although, as Dr. Garner pointed out, light-skinned people are more prone to it, dark-skinned people can just as well get melanoma, so it's really a myth that someone who's darker skinned cannot get it. So melanoma is something that you really should be thinking of from very early on and how to protect it. Clifford, we talked you out of the skin bleaching? Yeah. Well, it's not, it's not for me. It's actually um, for, for, it was just something I was actually doing online, so I was just researching it, came up. Very good. I'm glad you asked about it. I hope it stops other people that were going to go ahead with it. All right. Okay, have a good, a good, uh, good spring. All right, thanks. You too. Take care. Bill. Yes. How you doing, Bill? Where are you calling us from? Uh, Fresh Meadows. Fresh Meadows. What's, I, I, I think there's a movie theater out there. Isn't there a Fresh Meadows movie theater? Yes, there is. There's a Lowe's on Horace Harding. Yeah, you pass that as you're going along the uh, park. How is that theater? Still doing okay? Yes. Yeah. Very good. What's the best movie you saw this year? I, well, you know what? I don't go to movies much, okay. uh, I can be honest with you. Yeah. Yeah, every, anybody see Avatar? That's a good movie. Yeah. Absolutely. People fantastic. getting sick, though, from the 3D glasses. Did you ever see about that? You mentioned Yeah, the last show, yeah. right. <laughs> anyway, uh, Bill, what can we do for you? 
Okay, Doc, this is what's going on with my life right now. Uh, I, I had a stent put in a few years ago, and uh, I'm on a bunch of prescriptions for my heart. And recently, the last well over a year now, I've had a cough, and I went to my ge general practitioner, and he acted like it was nothing. He was just going to, he put it as my blood pressure medicine, which I'm given, and uh, that he just would give me some uh, cough medicine. Mm -hmm. But uh, it, it continues, and, uh, and it hasn't gone away. It subsided a little bit uh, just the last few months, but then it picked up again the last few months again. And at times it gets so severe that I, I black out. Like I, I, everything gets black, and it's been scary a couple times driving where. It just gets black for a second. You said black and the TV just went. Mm -hmm. but actually, our lights just went out when you said black. But anyway, I think our producer thought you were saying locking the lights. But go on. And uh, I just want to hear your opinion on it. I'm actually, I, I, uh, I'm a union guy, and I have my union doctor. I made a, uh, uh, an appointment to get my blood works. And then I'm going to go to my uh, heart doctor. And, let, me, uh, let, me get it, let me just pose this. First of all, to Dr. Khan. He's had a stent. He's got a cough. Are you worried, or should he be worried? Well, there's two questions. One, are one of the medications that you're on an ACE inhibitor? Anything ending in a pril? Uh, a pril. Um, Crestor, Plavix, Tricor, Aspirin, and the blood pressure one is Amplopine, Bene. Novask, Amlodipine. No oh, it, it does end with the pill, the one. Ben it does, okay. Well, medicines that end with the pill generally are ACE inhibitors, and they are known and notorious for causing a cough. Is it, is it a dry cough? Uh, yes, most of it. There is some phlegm, but, there, um, it, it, uh, but it is a continuous cough, yeah. yeah. It's not totally dry, no. I won't say it's, to, you know. The but it's not a reason. lot of phlegm either, but I don't know if, you know, the... Related. Right. The usual reason is from that ACE inhibitor. And there is another medication that you can change it to. There are loads of different blood pressure medications that your doctor can change you onto to get rid of that cough. Usually the best thing to do to stop the cough is to stop that medication. I do not suggest that you stop the medication before you go on a different blood pressure medication because if you have problems with your heart, that could put your heart under strain if your blood pressure is too high. Now, the other reason for a cough in people with heart disease is if you have had a heart attack before, sometimes the heart gets damaged. That's what the heart attack does. Um, and it doesn't pump as well. And so sometimes you can have a little bit of fluid build up in your lung. Um, and this can cause a, a cough. That's usually a more wet cough. Um, sometimes your legs will get swollen. So you definitely need some testing. And your doctor can do testing to see how good your heart is pumping, okay, with an echo. And yeah. they can also do a, blood, a simple blood test um, to see if you have what's called congestive heart failure. Are you working out? Well, uh, you, not like I used to. I don't, ha I don't know why. No, I don't work. I used to be really big on working out. i got to go to Dr. Saylor on this one. I got lazy to uh, Dr. Saylor so. basically sees the, the sickest patients in the ICU, and you have the patient, I'm sure, with the cough, but how important is, is working out in his situation? So, so Bill, I, I very much agree with everything Dr. Khan said. I think you should see your doctor fairly soon. And if indeed your cough is that much of a nuisance to you, they can discontinue that medication and start you on something so you won't suffer at all. So I wouldn't wait. Go to see your doctor. In terms of exercise, Bill, even if you had no heart trouble, Exercise is great. Exercise is so important, good for your heart, good for your lungs, not to mention good for your, for your mind, right? Some of our best mm -hmm. thinking is done during exercise. So, Bill, see your doctor, and I think consideration of stopping your ACE inhibitor and getting on a healthy exercise program would be two very helpful things for you. Thanks a lot, Bill. We hope you feel better. Give us a call back, all right? Okay, Doc, you didn't ask me about a restaurant, though. Oh, yeah, I want to hear in Fresh Meadow. I thought there was a paucity of restaurants. You got a good one out there? Uh, the Sly Fox Inn oh. on uh, by St. John's. I love that place on, on Union Turnpike. That's correct. Not far from Louis Conaseca's favorite place, Dante's. Exactly. I see Louis in Mass all the time at uh, 
Holy Family also. He's a great guy. We go shooting every summer for two uh, a weekend. We go up to Manchester, Vermont. We do a little skeet shooting, and then, and then we do some. Sh the wives do some shopping, and he's amazing. He hits about 85 out of 100 targets. Wow. Right, he's right. A big and fan of the right show. He's probably Dante's listening. That's a great restaurant too, and, and, and Louis' pictures all over it. Great with guy. Mullins and the rest of the team from that year. He's a great guy. Thanks a lot for calling. Hope St. John's hey, is a little bit better the now. Thank you for the information and help. What do you think, Dr. Saylor? I, I think they're going to be good, I hope. We still like going to see them. And yeah, that, yeah, sure. All right, we're now going to go to Kaisha. Nice name. Kaisha? Yes. Hi, what's the derivation of that name? What does it mean? I'm sorry? What does Kaisha mean? Um, it means love and strength. Wow. Love and what? Strength. strength. Love and strength. That is, yes. that's, you no, know, if you got those two, you can never go wrong, right? Exactly. What can we do for you? Well, my call is in regards to... My call is in regards to that I've been suffering with constipation for years. Yes. And I've been drinking the rough ridge, I've been drinking the prune juice, drinking the water, and nothing seems to work. I took a... So that we have a problem here with Kaisha? No, there's no problem. That's not the problem? No, no, I'm sorry, the problem of constipation. Yeah, cost, cost, um, constipation is the problem. That's the problem? Yes. Dr. Stevens. That's definitely a problem. That's a problem. So, Keisha, just one question. How old are you? I'm 41. 41. Okay. Any other medical problems? No. Okay. So it sounds like you've taken fiber and drink lots of fluid. You know, the most important thing for chronic constipation is to drink lots of fluid throughout the day. Some people say eight, o eight ounces of water, but there's no definite number. It's just a lot of water throughout the day uh, and fiber. If you're not getting enough fiber in your diet, you're taking prunes, that's great. You can take additives like Fibercon or Metamucil. If all that's not working, you can take more fiber and more fluid. If that's not working, I would su definitely suggest you see your doctor, and it may be time to get some more studies, like uh, colonoscopy. You know, you're only 41. You don't necessarily need one yet, but if this doesn't go away, I would suggest you get a colonoscopy. But before that, I would try all those other things first. Thanks a lot. We appreciate the call, Kaisha. Now, you know, it just came to mind. We're talking about Luke Conasecca, St. John's. I know Dr. Sale was a ball player, played a little b-ball at um, on the NCAA level. I played for Division Three, only on to Excellent, State. and was one of the good shooter. He was a decent shooter. He's still talking about you. <laughs> yeah. that place. I know that. And Dr. Stevens was a wrestler, went to Harvard, and wrestled right. his way through a couple of A's and a B. <laughs> but anyway, no, he's a great, uh, great, I had to bring that up because I was thinking of sports for a minute. How about Suzette? Hi, good night. Suzette, could you talk up a little bit because we're having a little difficulty with the mic? Hello, good night. Oh, now that's nice. We can hear that. Where are you calling us from? East Flatbush. East Flatbush, yeah. That, not far from here, actually. The nice, I saw a few uh, Jamaican restaurants. Um, you, which is your favorite restaurant out there? Golden Crush. Golden Cracker? Golden, Golden Crust. Crust. Golden Cracker. What's, what's the type Crust, food? Crust. Crust. Golden Crust. Now, if, if, we, if one of us was to go in there, what, what would we ask for? Oh, you should ask for the beef patties. The beef patties are good. The beef patties? Yes. All right. So, Dr. Like Sale, I know he's looking at his watch, see if he can get in there. and uh, Get there on time. What, what can we do for you out there in these Flatbush? Okay. Um, I have two questions. I don't know if I have enough time. To, we have time. Um, mention my two questions. All right. I have a problem with my voice, especially in the morning when I get up. I have no voice whatsoever. I can't speak, and I'm like I'm really, really old. No voice in the morning, because um, so let's let's hit that one, Tara. No voice in the morning. No voice. I'm horse in the morning. Oh, I don't horse know in why. the morning. Okay, horse in the morning. Excuse have me? you always been horse in the morning, or this is a new thing? Uh, it's 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 been like for like a couple of months. I realized okay. that it's been going on. Suzette, I hate to, I, we are almost out of time, so horse in the morning, uh, I want to go, uh, each of our panel will give you one sentence, horse in the morning. Well, you can have, an, if it's new, it might be something viral, and that can go on for quite a long time, and if it's something old, um, it's probably best that you see an ear, nose, and Dr. throat. Dr. Stevens, doctor. one sentence. I agree. Fluid, you may be dehydrated, so drink some fluid, and if not, see an ENT doctor. Dr. Saylor, last word. I'd be concerned about maybe you have reflux at night. So that's something I would very seriously consider. Suzette, please call us back. We love hearing from you, but I can't believe the show flew by. We're done with this edition. and It's in the books. The first show of the 11th season is, is history. And I want to thank my guests, Dr. Tara Khan, Dr. Daniel Stevens, Dr. Anthony Saylor, for coming in tonight. 
We hope we were able to help you. And remember, it's, it's always a good idea to be proactive about your health. Speak to your doctors about your concerns. Go for second or even third opinions. If the guy, if the guy feels offended that you're going for the second, then he's not the right guy. In the meantime, continue to watch the net and visit our website. Now, for those out there with the computer, it's netny.net slash doctor. Or you can check out our past quizzes, the weekly column from the tablet, and my video blog. Here you can also ask questions and post um, Twitter. I don't know if you guys are into Twitter. Sign up to, fo to follow net New York dot. I don't know. The dot may be a period at the end of that. <laughs> so for next week, we have a special episode. I told you Tara C is hitting the streets next wow. week. So I want to thank you for all your calls. Goodbye, stay healthy, and I'll see you in the tablet. <laughs>